Hey. So, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, but Simon Squib. Have you seen it before, Simon Squib? Guy goes around. Can I ask you, camera, what is your dream? Uh, How can I make it happen? Excuse me. Uh, do you have a dream? Excuse me, do you have a dream? Yes. Is, uh, it's been 24 hours now since he released his video of. Can I ask you, what is your dream? <laughs> within two hours and 26 minutes. And I'm gonna leave the link down below in the description, and I'm gonna leave a few more in there for you from the video and from a few other things that we're gonna talk about that of course I'm gonna show Wow. But I watched it, I don't know, at least three times by now, maybe even four, maybe five, maybe six, maybe seven. <laughs> Probably not seven, more like three or four. And I've been watching it so much that I actually had to create this video on it so that way I could share it with you. So let's get started. These are my takeaways and a quick like little run through of what I found most valuable in his experiences. I linked the video in my description um, and then let's just get off to the first thing. So the first thing that you should do is join Help Bank. It's his company that he started and that I've joined myself because I've, I see the great potential in it. I haven't helped a lot of people on there, but I have gotten some assistance myself and spread a little kind words to anybody that I thought I could give my opinion to that I thought I would be able to help. And who knows who you might be able to help or what kind of help you can get yourself. So I would definitely check it out. And again, link down below. Next, Next is to establish your platform. LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, Instagram, pop podcasts, blogs, writing a book, uh, find something that you enjoy and start building your brand. Start getting out there. Let the people know about you because that's how you're going to get successful in your business. But let's talk about actually starting that business and what to do. So first, when you start your business, don't limit yourself by hourly pay. And he expresses his very, very much emphasis on this. Pay by results. Don't be another hourly wager. If you want an hourly wage, you go work for <laughs> you go work for a company. Don't limit yourself by working for an hourly wage. You're limiting your earning potential. Earn by results. Earn by the potential that you can create for someone else. All right, got it. Let's go next. Create your company around your purpose, not around money. If you focus on money, then greed is gonna fall. If you focus around purpose, then all that can it lead to is more purpose and inspiring others' purpose. If your business is completely solely focused on money, when you hire people, all they're going to want is money. When you go to clients, all they're going to want to do is pay less. You see, by focusing on purpose, you bring inspiration. You bring what people want which is purpose. Everybody wants purpose. Everybody wants to feel like they're a part of something or feel like just a little bit more fulfilled with what they're doing with their day. So if you have to worry about where you're going to go with your company, think about your purpose. Think about what you want to do. Think about the life that you want to live. Thanks. Create a revenue model that starts to bring in income anything. It can be selling some chocolate bars. It can be selling uh, little pamphlets that kind of start talking about your business or do like Airbnb did and sell cereal. But what you really want to do is start to know your customers. Start bringing in income any way that you can so you can also get to know your customers. Get face to face with them and know their wants, know their desires, and start figuring out how to get there. Be passionate about the business you want to build. You see, passion equals prosperity, and I can't even count the number of times that this man said passion, how important passion is to building the business and the life that you want to live. Delayed gratification. <laughs> it's really something that not many people talk about, but when you're building a business, delayed gratification is super important to your success. By delaying the gratification that you receive, the win that you receive, you're actually investing in a bigger reward. By giving it out for free, companies get to know you better. You actually get to build a relationship with them. And with that relationship comes a better reward later on because they like you. They like the results that, you're, that you are giving them. And because they like the results you give to them, they're going to want to give more back to you. So, if 
you need to know, delayed gratification equals success. And make sure you follow that path line to rewards if you want a bigger reward. Don't ask for anything now. Give it to them for free. And watch what they'll give back to you as a thank you. Next, purpose. Know what success means to you. If you know what success actually means to you, then you have a pathway and you know where to go. So make sure when you're looking at your purpose, know what the actual success of your purpose means. Whether it's one day reclining at a beach and not doing anything, or it's if it's working three hours a week, but it's on something you love, or if it's always working, but always doing things that you enjoy, just the things that you enjoy because you've hired out all your weaknesses so you can just focus on your strengths, all right? So when you think about your purpose, think about what success means to you and what that involves, all right? Next is no pain, no gain, take risks. You have to take risks in business in the same way that you use delayed gratification to create a bigger reward for yourself in the future. You have to take risks. It's a risk and you got to take it. No pain, no gain. No risk, no gain. Make sure you take risks. Don't get too risky, but do the things that you know are essential to growth. If it's risky, but you know it has a chance for success, it's a chance to make it bigger, better, and just brighter for you. Make sure you take that leap, all right? You won't regret it. Maybe in the short term, but in the long term, you'll see how much better it comes out for you. Be okay with failure. Failure means that you're trying something new, that you're doing something you haven't done before. Because if you've done something a thousand times, you're most likely not going to fail. But if this is something that you're doing for the first time, for the first ten times, then most likely you're going to fail. But in that failure, you find what not to do. You find what works and what didn't work. So in that failure, you actually succeed because you get one step closer to creating a massive success and building the knowledge base so that you never fail again. But failure is just on the pathway to success. You have to stumble before you can run. You have to crawl before you can walk. So if you stumble, if you fall, if you feel like a failure, don't worry. That means that you're just getting a little bit better and you're getting closer to the life you want to live. So be okay with failure. It's just part of the process. It's, it's to create a mind map. See, this mind map, what he was talking about, it all starts, guess again, it's your purpose. Your purpose is what matters. You need to think about the life you want to live and build it. Build it from your purpose. Think about your hobbies that you enjoy, what you wouldn't mind doing 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the rest of your life, and start building a business around that. Think about what kind of business you want to create. If you're a photographer, a photography business, if you're a video gamer, maybe a streamer. If you love cooking, become a professional cook for yourself. Don't work for somebody else's business because they're not going to do it the way you want to. Do it the way you want to because the way you want to is probably different from everybody out there and that makes you unique and that brings out your full purpose. Don't mitigate it by working for somebody else. Do it by working for yourself and build the future that you want to live. Think about all the aspects, designs, takeaways, the, the whole journey is growth. Thinking about the life you want to live will lead you to growth. Thinking about what you want and how you want to get there and when you want to put a stopping point. That's all part of your journey. All right? <laughs> and don't get stuck in a business plan. Create a mind map. A map of every little thing that you want to do, every little thing that you want to achieve. And then take away as things no longer seem important anymore. And add on when you find things that you want to do. Just never stop growing. Create that mind map. Don't worry about a business plan. And just focus on the things that you want to create, the life that you want to live. And start taking actions to get there. Okay? Alright. Think about the future. When you're taking actions, when you're deciding on what you want to do next, on who you're going to take money from, on who you're going to do business with, think about the future. 
because it may seem good right now. But think about five to ten years from now. Is this going to hurt you in the long run? Play the long game. If it may hurt you in the long run, think about doing business with somebody else. Because your future is what you're creating. And you want to make sure that you don't step into a wrong pathway. That's not going to get you to your mind map. Your mind map should be your focus when you're making a decision. Not the short term game, but the long term of what you truly want. Make sure you follow it. Make sure you are guided by it. And make sure you keep it updated. So, when you're building your business, you want to make sure that you're focusing on your strengths. So, the major, the majority of your time should be focused on what you love to do. And what you don't love to do, your weaknesses, hire those out. Don't try to work on them and get them to as good as they can be. <laughs> try to hire them out. Find partners or investors or create an advisory board of people who actually like that stuff, who are good at it, and let them do it. Don't let your time be filled up with doing things that you're not good at. It's just a waste of time. Why do that when you can hire somebody else out, when your co-founder can do it, and you can focus on doing the things you enjoy? Because that's the whole point of building your own business, is doing the things that you enjoy. Just keep that in mind. Work. If you're going to have, if you're going to work, right? Work for equity, not a paycheck. Work for a part of the business rather than just the money that's coming in. Because the money's always going to come and go. But equity, having a piece of a business, that is actually what leads to growth and long-term success. Like Warren Buffett, he invested in businesses. And in that businesses, he got, <laughs> I mean, we all know where he is. So if you're going to hire somebody, don't hire them for the paycheck. Hire them for who they are. Check their social medias. Discover what kind of person they are. And hire for who and what they enjoy and what they like to do. Don't hire somebody just because they fill a gap. Hire somebody that wants more. When you say equity, their eyes perk up like, ooh, I get to be a part of something. And that's how you find good employees. That's how you find good partners. That's how you find people who want to see and help you grow. If you're, if you're struggling with cash flow, if you're struggling with your weaknesses, if you're struggling with finding investors, if you're struggling with the things that happen with the business, if you feel like you're not being held accountable, like you need somebody to hold you accountable or you need somebody to help push you or manage something that you really don't enjoy, then I think it's time for you to find a co-founder. And in that co-founder, you can find somebody who can invest in your business, somebody who can keep you accountable, somebody who can do the things that you don't want to do. And in that co-founder, you can find somebody who actually inspires you, who brings new ideas, and who brings a fresh breath of air to your business, to your mindset, and what you really want to achieve. And in that co-founder, you want to make sure that you're hiring for your weaknesses. You don't want to hire another you, but you do want to hire somebody who has the same morality as you, who has the same purpose, similar at least, somebody who you wouldn't mind spending all the time with. Because... Having a co-founder is like being in a marriage, and as I'm about to be married soon, I know how important it is to know who you actually want to be with. Write it down. Write the qualities that you want to see, the qualities that you would like to feel, um, because if you don't know who they are, what they're like, and kind of what you would want to be around with, then how are you going to find it? So make sure you write down a list of the person you're looking for. So that way you can start looking for them. And you can start finding them. You can ask around. You can go to places where they might be. And you can get yourself involved in the things that they would be involved in. And hopefully, maybe not tomorrow, but hopefully soon, you'll be able to find them. And they'll be able to take you to the next level. Because being alone, you can get there fast. But together, you get there far. So, if you're struggling with something, maybe it's time to get a co-founder. Think about it. Now, if you're thinking about selling, there were some really great tips from Simon's whole video, all right? There was many great tips there, but the biggest ones that I caught was, one, don't sell to somebody who 
doesn't want your product. Two, focus on the sizzle. Focus on the things that you're actually bringing. So if you're selling a phone, don't say, oh yeah, this is a great phone, new camera, new processor, new screen, the glass is, is now tempered glass, so it doesn't break as easily. See that doesn't break as easily? That's what you want to focus on, what it's actually bringing, what your company actually brings. So if you're selling um, a grill, don't talk about the propane, talk about the great burgers that it's going to build, talk about the deliciousness of the, of the new burn that the propane makes, and instead of charcoal, you get a smokiness from the propane that just wouldn't be any other way because of the inliner inside your grill. But I hope you get what I mean. Don't focus on the actual product. Focus on what you're going to bring to it. If your business is about helping companies, well, don't focus on, oh, we're just a marketing company. No, we revitalize companies. We save companies. We bring companies money. We bring companies millions of dollars when they need it. We bring companies great reputation when they need it. We don't, we're not just a marketing company. We're a revolutionizing company. So when you're thinking about how to market your product, Focus on the people who actually want it and think about what they want and why they want your product and focus on that, not your product, what you bring, what they want. That's what you want to focus on. Understand everybody you're going to be with, whether it be your co-founder, whether it be your partners, whether it be your investors, whether it be the people that you're selling to, whether it be the PR person that you're going to hire, whether it be the agents you want to work with, or whether it be the news journalists that you want to write stuff for you, that you want them to write an article for you, you need to understand them. You need to do your research. You can't sell to somebody who doesn't want to be sold to. And to find that out, you need to do the research behind them. You need to know who they are and what they're interested in. So make sure you do your research. He emphasizes this so much. Research, 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 research. Research the companies you want to work for. Research the companies you want to work with. Research the people you want to sell to. Research the people you want to work with. All right? Research. Research, research, research. I swear he said research at least 50 times in that video. So emphasis, research. If you want a reporter, so like if you want somebody to write a news journal about you, instead of them writing the journal for you, you write the journal for them. You find out what they're like. You find out what they're interested in and what they usually write about and write your own article about yourself, about what you're bringing to the community. Write it in their style. Write it how they would, how you think they would, and what you would like to see. Do all the research. Do all the work for them. Then send it to them. And give them a couple comments. Give them a couple likes. You know, show your support to them. And they will be way more likely to actually put it in because if they have the article if they know who you are if they know that you've done your research on them and they've seen your comments they've seen your likes then they'll be way more likely to go ahead and take the work day off because you gave them the article that they needed for that week so if you're looking to get into personal relations and you really want to get some newsletters or some ads on it and you don't know where to go do everything for them and then give it to them and it makes their life easy, so they want to make your life easy. Just keep that in mind. Research. Do your research. So, if you're thinking about what to do next, try partnering up with companies. That's a great PR move. See, partnering up with other companies, you also, of course, don't forget, research. Understand who they are, what they represent, and make sure that you're on similar raise lengths of where you want to go right because if they're a jewelry company they're super high end they're not going to want to do something that's talking about garbage they wouldn't want a, a jewelry company wouldn't want to associate with a garbage company because they're a jewelry company they're high end they want to be fashionable a garbage company is more about waste and taking care of waste and uh, they would be great though for a recycling company and the jewelry company would be great for a soup brand think about it make sure you're thinking about that when you're want to work with other companies or you want to partner up if you want to get sponsorships make sure you that you follow their brand because just like how you should be creating your brand you want to make sure that the brand that they're working with follows your brand because if you guys don't align down the same path then they're probably not going to want to work with you and you're just wasting your time if you're looking for investors right you need money of course right and you need investors
that investors or sponsors or venture capitalists, whatever, you want to make sure that they're bringing in more than just money. 99% of the time, it seems, you want to make sure that they're bringing in some type of value because it's not just money to them. They're investing in your company. And being that they're investing in your company, they want to feel like they're a part of it. And investors are a great way to get knowledge and experience. They can be like a mentor to you. Not only can they provide money, but they should also have some type of knowledge that would benefit your company. Because as being an investor, they should know about your company or about the lifeline that you're kind of going past. Your investors should know the path that you're going down, at least somewhat. They should at least have some type of experience in the way that you're going. Because if they're just throwing money at you, it's probably not going to be a good relationship down the line because they're going to be expecting something back, but all they're giving you is money. And you really want something more than that. You want to create some FOMO, some fear of missing out. Of course, when you're talking to your investors, by letting them know that you're looking for the right person to invest in your company. You're, just, you're not just looking for money. You're looking for somebody who's going to support you in more ways than one. Because you want somebody to invest in your company, not just monetarily, but in the whole aspect of your company. You want their ideas. You want their, as you want their mind to be involved in your company because as an investor they're playing a big part in creating the life that you want to live and just like a co-founder you want to make sure that they're good people and that it's good money if that's important to you if you're looking for help if you're looking for investors friends and family are a great avenue to look towards i know mine aren't the, the most privileged but they know people they know people that know people and those people know people and people know people and if people know people they may get you to somebody that has the money that you're looking for or has the experience or help that you're looking for. And when you're in the early stages, any help is great help. So make sure you talk to your friends and family. If you're looking for investors or you're looking for help, they may know somebody that can be that for you. I think one great point that Simon brought out is that if you ask him for money, he's probably not going to help you out. But if you ask for advice and ask for money, he's way more likely to give you money. Because asking for advice makes them feel what you're doing. Asking for money, it's very un impersonal. Asking for advice makes it personal and it makes them want to help you out, more likely to give you some cash. So when you're looking for a sponsor, you want to structure the value proposition to the brand that you're working with. When you think about it, you actually want to already know what kind of value you're going to be giving to your sponsor, what they'll be receiving in return for investing in you. And another thing is that when you're creating these relationships, make sure you create the relationship long term because these are all people. And at the end of the day, that person may be your fighting champion who will take you to your next level. You never know who you're talking to and you never know how they'll be able to support you. So treat every person with kindness. Treat every person like they're going to be the next person that's going to bring your business to the next level. So if you're trying to work with a big brand, think about smaller. Think about the small companies that work with the big brands because the big brands are already giving the small companies the money. So if you work with the small companies, those smart companies are more likely to actually get back to you within a reasonable time and they're more likely to work with you because, well, it's not a big company. So you're usually be able to talk to the had honchos a lot quicker than you would on a big brand like Nike's and Adidas, which will take months to schedule an interview, uh, to schedule some time to talk, whereas with these smaller companies, they'll be a lot more likely and a lot quicker to reply back. So think about that. Next time you're looking for a sponsorship, next time you're looking to kind of work with somebody, think about the smaller companies that build up and that help the big companies. As well, if you're looking for like some cooperation with big brands, Think about working with these big brands by using their merch. Uh, give them free advertising. And by giving them free advertising, you'll be able to actually show that you support them. And then they'll want to show their support to you. Because if you're wearing a Nike's full attire and you're athletic and you have an athletics channel, right? And you get this million dollar, million millions of views for like 30 videos. You bring them 30 million videos of free advertising. They're gonna want to work with you, and you'll be 
you'll be way more likely to see a send back message or reply to one of your comments if you give them free advertising. They're going to want to work with you as a thank you for what you've done for them. Kind of like a give and take relationship. But you're give, 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 and then eventually you can get your take. So you want to create a business. You got to create a brand a personal brand as well as a brand for the company and there's two ways that you can do this not developing a brand, personal brand but two ways to creating a business brand there's a leadership model and then there's the referencing brands thing so the leadership model pretty simple easy you have a leader people follow your leader for the brand that makes sense right and then the reference model it's not as complicated just a little out there you basically find people that align with your interests, align with your purpose, align with your brand, and you basically throw your logo on them and they rep you. And now there's a lot of pros and cons there, so if you wanna get more information on this, I suggest you go about an hour and a half into Simon Squibb's video and check it out. There's a lot of great details in there, and of course, if you haven't watched it already, maybe I would go and check it out. If you're hiring, don't be afraid to fire, all right? Like I said before, when you're hiring, you want to hire somebody for who they are and if they align with your purpose. But if they're holding you back, make sure to fire them. And fire them in a nice way. Give them maybe options to go in a different section of the company or maybe schedule an interview for a different company that they'd be more likely to work with. Because you see, having no employee is better than having a bad employee. As somebody who's worked with bad employees, I'd rather have no employee. Because having no employee, I'm like, all right, I just got to do a little bit of extra work. Having bad employees, like, please, please don't make me go to work today. So if you're thinking about it, no employee, better than bad employee. Help the bad employee to be a no employee. Or take the bad employee and move them into a different position where they're no longer a bad, no employee or a bad employee. They're a better employee. Think. People are what make your business. Take risks, don't be stagnant, and invest in the people. The people is what is going to take you to the top. The people is who is going to support you. So make sure you invest in people, you take risks, don't be stagnant, continue advancing your business, and be in a growth mindset. Failure is always around the corner, but in that failure, you find lessons that will make you take, that will help give you the experience to take you to the next level. Keep striving, my friends. When you're building a business, try to replace yourself as soon as possible. You want to hire great people, and you want to start molding your business in a way that has systems to get the best people into high positions, and eventually you want to mold it so that way you can get replaced so you can always be focusing on your strengths, always be focusing on the things you enjoy doing. So, hire for your weaknesses and replicate yourself. Create systems to benefit the employees and benefit yourself in the long run. And don't forget your purpose. Don't forget your mind map and what kind of life you want to live. If you're thinking about going small, like a small business, it's really nice for you. Maybe we think about it a little bit more. Because from what Simon said, having a big business is way better, way easier than having a small business. If you're going for the small business because you think it's easier, it doesn't sound like it's not. Wait, it doesn't sound like it's not. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no. Go for big business, more revenue, safer. If one market goes down, at least you have the other ones to look up to. So, if you're going for small business because you think it's easier, go for the big business because it's probably better and safer. And you get more experience and you develop more relationships. There's a lot of pluses to building a big business. With a big business, you have more people to be there to cover for any weaknesses that you have. So, if you've been watching this and you've been thinking about, well, I need a mentor, I need somebody to help guide me down the right path, I would suggest going in and watching Simon's video at about two hours in, um, about two hours, two hours and two minutes, just around there, I would go ahead and watch that because there's some great details on there. And of course, I can't replicate him, but I think this is a good summary of everything that we've kind of talked about so far. And the last two points, uh, the last two sections really didn't apply to me, but there were two things that I really got. So don't do a 50-48 don't do a 50 48 split. Do a 50-50 split, all right? Don't be greedy, okay? Be plentiful and you 
received wonderful back. Be nice, and you receive niceness back. Be kind, and you receive kindness back. Okay? Okay. Lastly, purpose, purpose, purpose. If you focus on purpose, the money will come. If you only focus about making a lot of money, then you may get there, but you're not going to enjoy it along the way, and it's not going to be something that can be sustainable. So, focus on purpose, and in that purpose, you find more than enough money. I promise you that. Purpose is everything. Purpose is what's going to get you up in the morning. When you're making a million dollars, another 250000 really isn't going to do much for you. Another 100000 If you're making a billion dollars, another billion isn't really going to do much. What, I could buy another yacht? Why do I need two yachts? You, you get what I'm saying here? Purpose is what matters. You can buy yourself 100 Bugattis. But what do you, you can only drive one at a time. So what's the point of having a hundred Bugattis? What about having a business that gets you up in the morning? That makes you happy. That makes you feel free. Or having a hundred Bugattis and feeling like you're dreading every day. Personally, I'll take the free lifestyle. The one that makes me happy. That's what I'm doing now. So I made this video because, one, I love Simon. And I know that he doesn't need my help to get any more sponsors or getting more people. But I've been working on a few projects myself. And if you've watched this far, thank you so much. But I've been working on a few projects myself, and I was actually supposed to release one today. But since watching this video, I found out a few things that I definitely need to work on before I do this release. I definitely want to put more into my mind map because I started making one, and with that, I started putting my goals down so that way I have them with me. And really figuring out what's important to me and what kind of life I want to live. So the book that I created, The Solution to the Mental Health Pandemic, it will be coming out a little bit later because I want to make sure it's the best that I can bring out as well as I know I haven't really been posting as much and I think Simon's suggestion which I actually didn't say before is when he talks about social media focus on one thing don't have 10 social medias and never post but focus on one social media that you enjoy that you're comfortable with and that you can really strive on and focus on that by focusing on that you can really strive there and grow out okay so, the last things I want to leave for you is that Love Changes. My name is Joshua Ishmael, and I'm the founder of Love Changes, and I plan on changing the world by ending child abuse. My purpose is to end child abuse. I was abused for 16 years, and I don't want that to happen to anybody else. And I know there are thousands of millions of people who struggle with the same thing I struggled with for so long, and I want to help them. I want to help you. If you're one of those people, I really want to help you and I want to show you that path. And that's why I wrote my book, The, Men the Solution to the Mental Health Pandemic. Because that's part of the solution that's in there. It's talking about being abused. It's talking about expressing yourself. It's talking about how to fix what you've gone through. So if you need help, I'm here for you. If you need somebody to talk to, I'm here for you. If you need help finding your purpose, I'm here for you. And I actually do this all for free right now. So, one day, my time is going to be, I mean, it's already super busy, but as of right now, I can still charge absolutely zero dollars for what I'm going for everything that I do, and I'm happy for that. I'm happy that I can help a lot of people, and all that I ask is you tell me if I actually helped you, and let me share your story of success. That's it. And you can be completely anonymous. Just send me a letter. I'll read it out on stage. So thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And if you could like, if you could subscribe, and just so you know, love does truly change. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And don't forget, I love you. We all love you. We're all here for you. And we're in this together. This earth, this planet, this life. It's here for us. For us to take advantage of. To us to change in the way that we want to change. And I'm going to change it through love. Hopefully you'll be there along the adventure with me thank you so much for watching definitely check out simon squibb's video check out help bank and if you have some time check out some other videos that i've created i have a free audiobook for you if you need it <laughs> love you don't forget love changes